Hello everyone, and welcome to another World Leader PvP video. Today I'm going to be showcasing some fights against Lord Masters. And before we actually get started with this whole thing, I do want to say that I had more fights with Lord Masters than just what I'm going to be showing here, but even with these ones, I've been having recording issues just because I got myself backlogs on how much footage I actually had on my machine at one time. So I've actually got pretty much an hour's worth of footage split up between the both videos, plus even more lying around. So I was having recording issues and stuff. Still, I've got plenty to show here, and Lord Masters, I think you should say a bit that I have enough to have a video dedicated entirely to Lord Masters. Yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so the first one is uh, Silvos. This is actually the first Lord Master that I fought in this whole um, cycle of one versus ones and actual Lord Master fights and all that stuff. So, you know, he was the start. Basically, what we're going to see first is that, you know, the Lord Master's Water Lord really does heal a ton. And, yeah, it's not very effective to actually spend a lot of power and time trying to DPS it down just because it doesn't work very well. Now one thing that I'm doing very carefully is I am taking shots at this guy's eagle and then switching back to him because I want I'm hoping that he's not gonna pay much attention and that I'll be able to slowly whittle this eagle down and take care of it. Now the eagle taking care of the eagle really just takes care of flanks and some damage that gets thrown at you. And actually, I need to be hitting a tactical pot to remove something right now, but I'm not. Uh, but taking care of those flanks and everything, you know, that's just less extra stuff for the lore master. It's not as important as taking out a raven, though, because the ravens do have that stupid tactical mitigation boost. Uh, still, he's not really paying attention to the fact that I'm taking shots at his eagle. He's not healing it, from what I can see, and uh, I'm a little surprised at that, honestly. Uh, sadly, right there, I didn't manage to use my interrupt in time, so he managed to get off the ends with no real trouble. And uh, now I'm going straight for the eagle, I want to finish it off. And he actually healed himself instead of the eagle. Eagle's dead. More Master Without the Pet is not going to be a whole lot of trouble for the most part. Um, if I need to, I can go right into Commander's Stance, and then I will be functionally vulnerable, which I'm doing right there. And uh, this is basically just going to be a, sl a little slug fight to see who runs out of 3000 plus power first. And uh, we'll see what happens. Now, he's being very, very crowd control happy, as you can see, so fortunately that does keep my diminishing re returns up pretty high, and means that he doesn't get a whole ton of effect out of it. And now the power drain. Yeah, power draining. I don't even care. <laughs> and look at that, he failed to have his stun immunity up, and I actually interrupted his power draining. That's just... ay ay ay. Um, still, he's continuing to use that water lore as effectively as he can, and now here goes a, another round of my banners. So, we'll see what I can do. I, one thing that I recently found out, because when I bought the Banner of Terror on my low-ranked War Leader and was taking a look at it, is they actually have put on a minus induction... no, not minus induction, a minus regeneration effect onto it to counteract the fact that fate was taken off of the uh, debuff list. So, that's actually kind of interesting to me. Uh, it's basically 500 and I want to say 86 points of both morale and power regeneration. So it's still handy for actually running people out of power because it does lower the regeneration amount. Uh, I don't know if it's as much as it used to, or maybe more or what, but at least it's still there. So it's something that wasn't lost, but I originally had thought we had lost. You know, <clears throat> and I don't know. Maybe it was actually something that just came out with uh, update 9.1 or something like that. But whatever the case, it's actually there. So Banner of Terror still just as useful as I as it was when I first talked about it. There goes his power drain again. I went ahead and tried to interrupt him, but he's got his stun immunity up this time, so I'm not going to be. Instead, I'm just going to go ahead and pump damage on him. And I don't care that he's running me out of power. I'm just going to whack you in the face with my sword. And he didn't even run me all the way out. 
So the fight's going to drag on for a while now, and really it's just going to show you Lore Masters don't have the damage to put down a, 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 a War Leader, but the War Leader doesn't have the damage to put down the Lore Master either. And the one really big thing that happens that I find during this fight, which I'm just going to go ahead and skip to that right now in terms of what I'm talking about, is Lore Masters still get power when they're power draining you, even if you've got no power. Now, if this wasn't the case, you could kill a Lore Master. And honestly, fighting him from commander stance like this, really not the best option, just because I'm not putting down a whole lot of damage. It might be better for me to actually be more aggressive, or to have been more aggressive when I had more power available, and seen if I could have made him run out of power a little bit faster. Um, actually, got <clears throat> more freaks showing up in the background. Look at that pesky little burglar right there. But just doing things like this, really not very effective. I mean, <laughs> even with him power draining all that stuff, he's not going to do anything at all. And uh, there I go ahead and change the name of my banner just to make sure that the bird isn't going to interfere with anything. But, uh, you know, there is some stuff you can still do to make yourself more effective. Uh, here we go, he is very low on power, now he's starting to try to drain, and I should be stunning him shortly, he doesn't have stun immunity up, there we go, interrupted him, and now would be, well he's got 2400, so he's still got quite a bit of power, I should drop my Banner of Terror, I'm not, I don't think I drop Banner of Terror again this entire fight, just because I don't think that it's actually going to affect his power regeneration, which is a mistake on my part. Um, now I'm actually doing a little bit of movement around to force him to actually face me, but he's really not going to do much of that at all. <laughs> uh, he, he relies on his dots, and he relies on his water lore, not realizing that I'm a much more sustainable class than he is. There we go, I actually did drop my banners again. And uh, he should be out of power pretty quick here, just because he's got a very constant skill use rate. Uh, there we go, he's 400 power, there we are, 152, uh, he's basically out. And now I've dropped the brawlers, I'm going to go ahead and put a lot of damage on him. And as long as he is out of power like this, I am going to have a nice big opportunity, but there went that annoying little heal we all know as Wisdom of the Council. And there he's got his stun immunity up and he is power draining. And this is where you find something that's just plain wrong with the way that Lore Masters work. You can't interrupt them unless you get a stun on them, but they draw power even though you've got none. Which means that they can keep their power bar all the way up and not properly run out. Now, if they don't use that power drain, you're going to be able to kill them. If they don't use it, if they use it and start it, but you manage to put enough damage on them anyway, then, you know, they're still in trouble. But otherwise, you cannot cause them to lose, is the, the big problem. It's the Lord Master's fight to throw away, but at the same time, it's also yours to lose, because he's not going to kill you by himself unless you really give it to him. Uh, there I'm talking to Nim, <laughs> just, just because of how boring the fight is, and I realize now just how much it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, the other, one other thing I could potentially try to do is I could go ahead and use my superior power pots, but actually right now I send, I'm going to send Nim a tell very shortly, asking him if he wants help, and uh, then instead of waiting, I actually am going to throw a bubble at him. And that's just going to be a big mistake, because there's a Warden hanging out, there's the Lore Master who's still attacking me, who I am ignoring, and then there's the Burglar. And they're all going to turn on me. Which, it, I'm, do, I'm just going to let it run a little bit further. Right now I'm going to go ahead and... Well, I should toss that bubble very, very shortly here, because I really don't want the Burglar to win. Because, really, who wants Burglars to win? Burglars are boring. And they're called a shadow, and I'm going to finish them off, and I get stunned right there. And that was just enough of a delay that I don't manage to catch up, and I don't manage to kill the burglar. And I'm very sad about that. 
and, but after that I get killed, nothing more to see, and it's my own fault. Next is Celestial, and this fight I only have the first 2 minutes 40 some seconds recorded, but this is the important part of the entire fight anyway. So <clears throat> we're going to get started, he's got his water lore up preemptively because hey he needs preemptive water lore, right? <laughs> Um, that's burglar target in the chat window telling me about the uh, team speak that somebody set up for the monster side. You know, on Landreval now, which, yeah, there have been a couple attempts at getting Landreval creeps to have a unified chat channel the way that Elendilmere does it. None of them have really stuck. Uh, we'll see how long this team speak attempt goes, but I don't expect it to go very long. Now. Celestial is using the Raven, which means he's got a whole lot of extra tactical mitigation, and I really want to take out that Raven. So, uh, once again, I'm going to be just going ahead and putting more damage on it whenever I can. And uh, actually, I'm, I'm just going to focus on it for a little while here. I, it doesn't look like he's actually bothering to do anything too important, and Celestial has gone ahead and power drained me. This is a big mistake on his part because I'm trying to kill this Raven and he was letting me go at it with no interruptions at all. Uh, it looks like he did use one of his lesser heals, but he isn't water lowering the raven. He's not going full heal mode to keep the thing alive, and that means that it is about to be dead. And there we go. Dead raven. He's lost his buff, he's lost his flanking, all that stuff. Now it's going to be a pretty easy tank and spank and uh, just outlast him. So, for those lore masters, uh, there was only one lore master that I fought in all this who actually took care of their pet, and that was uh, Junio, Nyx, Mannequin, whatever you want to call him. He did take care of his pet, actually, and that fight, that just went nowhere at all. In the very end, I actually just swapped out of R of Command, which really, you don't need to leave R of Command versus the lore master, they just don't do rapid damage to you. And I went to Defensive R and I walked from Crossroads all the way to Lumber Camp just to get rid of him and end the fight because it had gone on for so stinking long. Alright, so I'm going ahead and putting damage on him. Once again, here he is, he's trying to power drain me. I was <laughs> starting to induct my heal and then realized no, I need to put damage on him instead right now. This is my opportunity. And so we've got him at yeah, low f half health. I actually just dropped a little bit lower than that, and I go ahead and use my power pot right there, so I have some hit quitters just for the extra power. Try to interrupt the ends, but I didn't make it. Fortunately, I was immune to the stun, and you know, I get stunned right there because I wasn't immune at that point. But it does let me get an extra power fear heal off, and I'm trying to finish him off. I don't have a whole lot of power on me, which I should have hit a better power pot to have just a few hundred more, but. Uh, he's very low, and in just a second here, he's going to hit Wisdom of the Council, and this is what's going to just get me killed. They're almost dead right there, and Wisdom of the Council. If I have had just a little bit more damage available, if I had the dot from Black Speech or something, could have killed him right there, or you know, even gotten a, a, one extra crit. So, if the Lore Master lets you go take him down really low like that, because they want to get more out of the Wisdom of the Council, or they just give you the opportunity, you can get them, it's going to be based a lot on luck and just what exactly do you have in your toolkit and arsenal, all that stuff. And uh, now I start running into some recording issues, you can see how everything's slowed down and is really bad on the FPS. And so I stop recording shortly after this. Uh, the fight ends with us at a draw. Okay, and for the final fight of the evening, I am on my low rank war leader, and uh, this is part way into it, but I get jumped by this guy, and he's level 80? I didn't even notice that until just now, okay? I, I'm sorry, I did not notice that he was level 80. Um, and I actually had sent tells to this to Kakadal to come kill him. I really feel bad about that now. I did not realize this guy was 80. I wasn't paying any attention to what level he was. I assumed he was 85, and that was it. Oh, man. I'm wasting time attacking the pet and all this stuff, and he's level 80. Ay, ay, ay. This... 
What a mistake. That <laughs> People miss stuff all the time, but uh, there goes Kakadol right in the background, and just look at this. Dead. And just drive by nomming by that little spider there. But he was using the eagle, and uh, there goes the eagle ability. He just rezzed himself. And oh, I realize... Well, I don't exactly realize what happened at the time. I, I was a little not sure exactly. I, I forgot about the whole eagle res, but uh, this is you know no pet anymore. Which you know, lucky for me that that managed to happen that way. And rank four war leader versus a level eighty lore master. He goes ahead. He's trying to power drain me, but this gives me an opportunity to heal up, put damage on him, and keep him from you know healing himself at this particular moment. So he does his water lore, it's not super effective, also because he doesn't have audacity and stuff, and I believe there's a lot of red outposts, uh, I can do a lot of damage to him. Uh, there went his Wisdom of the Council, which did not do a full heal the way some lore masters get it to be, uh, but still took him up quite a bit. And at that point, I'm a little bit worried about everything, but then I kind of realized that, you know, I'm actually putting really good damage on him and he's been forced to use up Wisdom of the Council. This really hasn't been long of the fight. I might actually be able to take this guy out. And of course, still completely missing the fact he's level 80. And I've actually rewatched this fight twice before and missed it those times as well. I really... how, how oblivious do I have to be to miss the fact that the guy's level 80? Oh. Wow, that's just wow. Uh, so, low ranked world masters, not going to be nearly as effective as the very high ranked ones. Uh, right there, that interrupt, that was an interrupt on water lore. You can actually interrupt that skill, which is very handy. Uh, learning that pre animation before they just go into the arm straight out and the thing applies, it's going to take some time, but figuring that out will definitely help you out quite a bit, and it should be finished right there. Loremaster dead. And actually, that's the fourth killing blow for that particular war leader. So, <clears throat> you know, it was a level 80 Loremaster, but at the same time, the rank 10 hadn't gotten anywhere against uh, guys that were equal ranks and levels and stuff. He got shown up by the rank 4 against the Loremasters. Oh, the shame. Well, it is the same player. And it was a level 80 Loremaster, so not so bad. Anyway, uh, well, Lord Masters, honestly, I really don't have any problems with where they stand right now, except for the whole power drain being able to give them power when you've got none. That just seems like an oversight to me, and something that should probably correct be corrected for at Morse play only. It could stand for PvE and raids and all that kind of stuff, but in the at Morse, it really shouldn't give them power when they're not actually draining anything out of their target. That's that's just the one caveat that I have regarding that. Uh, otherwise, you know, they've got their strengths and their weaknesses. It's actually not a super bad matchup, at least for the War Leader. Uh, I'm sure other classes have more trouble, but at the same time, other classes tend to hit a bit harder, so they should be able to do slightly better, uh, especially the, the big thing, as always, is take out the lore master's pet and it'll give you a big advantage it takes away their flanks which flank healing is a big part of how lore masters function and it takes away that shadow mitigation if they're using the raven just gives you so much stuff and if you've got a reaver if you take out that pet it's a defeat response and then you hit glory and victory and you're up 10 percent damage and you've got your heal ticking and then you will really shred through them so that's just the way to go about it now, before I finish off this video, I do have a couple things I just want to touch on. Some messages and stuff that I've been sent on YouTube that I think need to go ahead and be mentioned. The first is from Mr. Kochi, which I'm going to put some pictures up for you to see. It says, I've been wondering about the creep roundtables. I might possibly be interested in participating in the Weaver one. I'm just curious as to the requirements in terms of the rank and general experience, and also the date and time of recording. Okay, basically, for the Monster Roundtables, this is related to the podcast that I do. You really don't need any experience, you just need to actually play the class, because even if you've got very, very little experience, it's nice to just have the new player experience of, like, well, I've only been playing it for a little bit, and I'm only rank 3, 
But this is what it seems like to me, because it helps to balance out having really high-ranked people on there to also have the new player saying, well, this is what it's like at the low ranks and what it seems like to me. So really, if you want to do that, go right ahead. Also, uh, I think it's, it's worth actually putting that out here now, is that the Monster Play Roundtables, which is uh, something that I did last year, I'm redoing those again, work new expansion and all that stuff. It's been a year. So if anyone out there who watches this channel would like to participate in a podcast and do a roundtable where you're going to discuss a specific class and talk about the ins and outs of it and all kinds of wonderful stuff, uh, you can listen to the previous roundtables if you want to get an idea of exactly how they go. Feel free to send me an email, my contact info and all that stuff. We'll go ahead and do that and uh, get it all set up and everything. And uh, for sure, as you know, <laughs> I am going to get back to you when we record Fellowship of the Creeps and talk to you more about it then. All right. And then I have a message from Crash Black. It says, Hello, I am one of your subscribers, and while looking through your videos the other day, I found the one entitled Update 5.1, Still Bugged, Still Fighting. I have a question about the music that starts playing in the background, more specifically this music, which uh, there's a link there. My question is this, do you watch the cartoon called My Little Pony Friendship is Magic? My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Uh, you mean the one created by Lauren Faust, done in Canada by Studio B, that's licensed by Hasbro, that's been going for two years now, and uh, has a very interesting TV tropes page, and has a gigantic following on the internet, and all kinds of stuff among uh, middle-aged and 20-year-old to 40-year-old uh, males in particular. Never heard of it. Anyway, that's all for this time. Good luck and have fun out there. Ugmog is out.